Hey folks, it's now almost six weeks into season four and I thought it was a good time to do my full review of the season and try to figure out if Blizzard's new approach of doing these recap seasons at the end of an expansion is still holding up as well as it did in Shadowlands. So let's dive in. I think it's fair to say that the announcement of a Shadowlands style season four had a fairly lukewarm reception. Unlike Shadowlands, where it was pretty obvious that a full 9.3.0 patch would have caused a delay in the release of Dragonflight into 2023, which honestly I think very few people, if any, wanted, in Dragonflight the team have been able to maintain a very consistent and high pace of content releases, and I for one had been expecting, or maybe just hoping, for a return to the Legion BFA pattern of having a full 0.30 content release and the news that we would instead be getting another Shadowlands style season 4 was a major disappointment for me. Blizzard have said in a developer interview that a season 4 did not replace a full new raid tier and that the alternative to season 4 would have been for season 3 to just drag on to the bitter end. I definitely do think that the seasonal refresh is a lot better than a very long content drought but Blizzard haven't really explained why they were not able to deliver a fourth full raid tier when they could manage that feat in the likes of Legion and BFA, or indeed why Dragonflight is now one of only three World of Warcraft expansions alongside Warlords of Draenor and Shadowlands that only had three major raid tiers. It was pretty obvious why those other two expansions had fewer raids than usual. Warlords production issues were pretty obvious at the time, and Shadowlands was a perfect storm of external factors such as COVID and the lawsuit that got in the way of the game's production. But at least to us outsiders looking in, Dragonflight's probably been the expansion where the team have had the production most nailed, and that's what really makes it hard for me to understand what's happened here. Even if we do get the war within earlier than we expect, from a player perspective, World of Warcraft has had short red tears before, Season 1 of BFA, for example, was only 4 months long if I recall, and a smaller raid would, alongside faster gear progression, have done the job very nicely. So to my mind, whatever the reasons are for not being able to fit a 10.3.0 in, they are far more likely to be production related rather than timing related. That said, I do suspect that the relatively positive reception of Shadowlands Season 4 an early speculation from at least some of the community around the likelihood of a repeat of that in Dragonflight may have at least had some impact in making the team be comfortable with a decision like this. Nevertheless, we have ended up with a season 4, so let's take a look at how Blizzard delivered the season, how it's been going by running through the update content for all of the main game pillars, and then I'm going to take a look at its release and the player reception. The one big disappointment for me of the Shadowlands Season 4 was the way that open world content was completely forgotten. At the time it was clear from the announcement that the open world would not really see any new content, but right up until launch I'd been expecting at least an item level bump in the open world rewards, but even that didn't happen, leaving world content only players to fall behind the rest of the player base with only a tiny chance of one or two upgrades from the world boss. That's if the world boss even dropped anything, which, let's be honest, it rarely ever does. Even as someone who did Mythic Plus and raiding, and therefore gets very little gear from the open world gearing, it was still pretty disappointing, and in my view, open world only players got a pretty nasty and easily avoidable content drought at the end of Shadowlands. Game director Ian Hazicostas did acknowledge that as a bit of a miss in one of the developer interviews, and sure enough for Dragonflight Season 4, the open world has got a little bit of attention. As well as the hope for item level bumps to gear, we also got an updated weekly quest that encouraged us to return to some of the older world events and a bunch of tweaks that have made it easier to convert gear into tier. These changes for the most part are very welcome. Returning to some of the older events like Siege and Dragon Bean Keep have been quite fun, while others like Researchers Under Fire, which still seem to have some odd bugs in the Dream Surge, honestly a bit less so. Overall, in the context of Season 4 not being about content and being bookended by two major patches that have added content that is relevant to world content players like Remix and the Dragonflight meta achievement, world content players have though probably got the best out of the deal. 
Moving on to raiding, and this is probably where there has been the most mixed response in my view. Whereas in Shadowlands, raiders got some new affixes that while not particularly impactful, did at least serve to add a little bit more flavour to the encounters. This time around, the raids are broadly unchanged, with just a bump in gear item levels and a commensurate increase in health and difficulty. That increase was in the post nerf raid, so overall they've not been massively challenging to do. The one notable change is gear related. In Shadowlands we had the Dinar system that asked us to kill 30 raid bosses in return for one weapon or trinket. The equivalent this time around Antique Bronze Bullion has a random but actually very high chance to drop from any awakened raid boss at a rate of 1 per week with a catch up system. And two of these are all that is required to get an item, which now has an extended pool of rings along with a back and a neck piece to choose from along with the usual weapons and trinkets. In my experience, the most I've had to kill to get one bullion is four bosses, so this is a lot quicker, in my opinion, a lot more interesting. So much so that whereas I only ever did one clear of each raid in normal Shadowlands for the mount, I have actually been doing the raid properly this time, which in my opinion demonstrates the value of more generous pacing for raiding gear. For me, the reward systems for the raid are a lot more interesting, but I do still think that this was a missed opportunity for Blizzard to experiment with improvements to the raiding experience. In Shadowlands Season 4, Mythic Plus got an experiment with using old dungeons for the Mythic Plus pool that was so successful it became the standard in Dragonflight and eventually led us into what was the best ever Mythic season in the mode's history. With the raiding experience at least at the top levels appearing to be on a very slow but nevertheless perceptible decline, it's surprising to me that Blizzard aren't actively looking for ways to change that trend and what better time to try out something new than right now. The best hope, I think, is that the signal they do get from the gearing changes will be used for the team to inform how they design raid rewards in the next expansion to hopefully try and give raiding a little bit of a boost. Moving on to Mythic Plus, and we got an almost complete reversal of Shadowlands Season 4, with all of the Dragonflight dungeons in the rotation except for the Mega Dungeon which had recently featured in Season 3. Getting a second go at these dungeons does make a lot of logical sense. But in my personal opinion, the Dragonflight dungeons haven't been a huge success in the earlier Mythic Plus seasons, typically feeling a lot more punishing and even overtuned compared to the older dungeons, and I for one had not been looking forward to them when I knew they were coming back. Blizzard were clearly aware of this though, as the dungeons got a bunch of tuning changes and other tweaks. These changes have been highly beneficial and the season for me has actually gone a bit better than I'd expected. Despite that, I do think that some of the dungeons, most notably Ruby Life Pools and the third boss in Halls of Infusion, do remain disappointingly overtuned. Those two dungeons could have been big successes if only they had been less punishing, especially for healers. The big change this time around is a permanent change to dungeon scaling. Mythic 2 through to 11 were effectively removed with a level squish that means that a new plus 2 is around where a mythic plus 12 was and a new plus 10 around where a mythic plus 20 was. Along with that, heroic dungeons are increased in difficulty to where mythic 0 used to be and mythic 0 is around an old mythic plus 8. One side effect of this is an effective reduction in the number of affixes for many players with all three affixes now not kicking in until Mythic Plus 10. These changes were not an experiment this time around, but a permanent change that will be carried forward into the war within. I do think that bringing a change of this type in Season 4 was a very sensible move for Blizzard. Had it caused any major issues, which honestly it really hasn't, they would have had opportunity to learn from the issues before the next expansion kicked in. It wasn't perfect, I did see some players getting caught out by the adjustment, mainly by jumping into keys that they were not really ready for, but overall the player base has now adjusted well, and this will, I think, make the start of the war within Mythic Plus a lot smoother. It's really odd to me to see Mythic Plus remaining the main focus of Blizzard's attention in this type of season. Mythic Plus does continue to go from strength to strength and the player numbers we see from sites like Raider.io do seem to bear that out. And of course, it does deserve this attention from Blizzard. 
but surely raiding also deserves more attention. Part of me does wonder if there is a little bit of Blizzard seeing a shift from raiding to Mythic Plus and adjusting where they put all their effort as well. But that could lead to that shift just becoming accelerating and it does feel really unlikely that the team would want that to happen. Raiding has always been the crown jewels of World of Warcraft and the dev team do seem to enjoy the prestige around it. I just hope that they're not so blinded by that prestige that they're resting on the laurels because that prestige honestly is becoming ever more fragile as time goes on. Now I'm the first to admit that I don't know an awful lot about PvP but if PvP players are feeling a bit neglected especially in Season 3 as an outsider looking in it very much looks to me like they have a point. New content is too much to ask in Season 4, but a simple item level bump and a couple of new mounts must feel very samey to players who, for all accounts, found the previous Season 3 one that was very difficult for them to enjoy fully. I know that Plunderstorm is very much PvP content and was also new, but it was also a completely different mode of play that, frankly, also exists in other games. If PvP players want to battle Royale, there are plenty of options out there already. There's not really much more for me to say here, but I do hope that Blizzard do have more plans for PvP in upcoming expansions. A new battleground and solo queues for RBGs are good additions, but I do think that PvP probably needs and deserves more attention than just that. I just hope that we're not already at the point where PvP numbers no longer justify that kind of effort for Blizzard. Okay, well that's all the main content, but I do think it is also worth talking about the start of the season. In the run up to season 4 there was a lot of discussion in the community about bugs in the game and it frankly wasn't the best time to have more issues impacting headline features. But that's exactly what we had with issues upgrading legendary weapons, issues with crest acquisition, tier conversion and more seriously a bunch of issues with guilds including unreliable access to guild banks. To make matters worse, the second week of the season introduced a new bunch of bugs in these areas. I have said it before and I'll no doubt say it again, World of Warcraft is a massive game and it's always had its fair share of bugs and to an extent these are going to be inevitable but when these fall in major headline features they impact far more players and get far more attention than the odd broken quest and old content. In the case of World of Warcraft, these issues are only made worse by a general lack of communication from Blizzard when things go long. They obviously cannot laboriously go through every minor glitch and bug, but allowing Guild Bank to be effectively broken for just over a week without even acknowledging it, let alone providing an update to affected players, does not give me confidence that the developer team have the level of customer players focus that we should be able to reasonably expect from a live game like World of Warcraft. Blizzard have been acknowledging that they need to up their communication game for years, but sadly they are yet to deliver on those promises, and this can only serve to further erode player trust at a time when the team still has a lot of work to do to fully recover the trust that was lost over recent years. As a deeply engaged player, I can power through issues like this, but new players running into this kind of stuff will rightly question if the game quality is where it should be. And I personally have encountered several laps players who are telling me that it's putting them off from returning. If Blizzard do want to return the game to growth and get both new and returning players back into the fold, this is one area where I do think they need to focus a lot more on delivery. With all of this, I suspect that if you're not playing Season 4, it all sounds a little bit gloomy. But now that the issues have been fixed by Blizzard, how is the season really landing from a gameplay perspective? Coming from a place of disappointment and apprehension, Season 4 is actually turning out to be a lot more enjoyable than I had expected. And this is a sentiment I'm hearing from a lot of other players as well. The dungeons are much improved, albeit yes, they could still be better, and the new bullion system is a notable improvement on Dinars. Add in bonus bullion from the occasional mythic dungeon quest, a brisker pace of gear acquisition and the continued positive impact from the gear upgrade system and there's certainly enough to keep me busy and engaged in game at least for now. Assuming the growing expectation that we're likely to see the War Within release closer to the start of autumn than to the end of it, I think that season 4 is going to turn out to be quite a success. 
And if it does start to go scale, there's always the remix to fall back on. For the last two expansions, I have enjoyed taking my main into the new expansion with maxed out gear and not having to replace it for a major part of the leveling. And I'm also looking forward to continuing to work and getting to that same place throughout Season 4. I do remain a little salty that we didn't get a 10 3 but the overall package when we include Remix is definitely still in a better place than Shadowlands and probably even the previous two expansions right at the end. If the expectation that the next three expansions will last 18 months rather than the usual two years, we may not see a 0.30 patch again. I am okay with that if we do get the faster release of those expansions, but if we do end up sticking with two year expansions, I do think it's important that season fours don't become the norm. Ian has already had to address questions about shrinkflation in a developer interview, and I do hope that the team has taken on board the message from the player base that this approach does leave us feeling a bit short-changed. It's better than nothing, but I would very much prefer a full fat season if we're going to have to wait out the full two years. But what about all of you? What part of season four are you enjoying the most? Or are you now a full-time Remix Andy? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll be doing a review just like this for 1027, which will of course include a dive into Remix in a few weeks time. That is once all the dust settles from Blizzard's surprise that a bunch of MMO players would hardcore farm everything in sight, and it becomes a bit easier to get a full handle on how the features played out. To make sure that you get notified when that and other videos goes live, please do be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. I'm also planning to introduce a lot of in-depth coverage for The War Within in coming weeks to help you understand more about what the end game content is likely to feel like, and subscribing is by far the best way to support my channel's efforts. If you found this video even remotely interesting or useful, do let me know by hitting the thumbs up icon. That's all for now, thanks for watching.